Hey, don't you just love it when you're moving and you've got to take your entire life and fit it into boxes small enough for a person to carry? Spoiler alert, nobody's going to say, yep, I sure do, in the comments. And yet, there's a great lesson to be learned from the piles of boxes. Well, before we start unboxing lessons for today, I want to say welcome to Mornings with Bishop Robert. Thanks for joining me. My goal is to introduce people to the Jesus they never knew and help them get to know him and his word personally and better. So if our time together today speaks to your heart, let me invite you to like, subscribe, and share it with a friend. Boxes, boxes, boxes. When you're moving, it is amazing how many boxes you end up needing. And I'm an expert in this arena, by the way. I have actually moved as many as three times in a single calendar year, and about 20 times in the last 40 years. And let me tell you something. That's a lot of boxes. Now, it's, it's one thing to count your blessings, and another thing entirely to try and pack them all in easy-to-carry containers. <laughs> Speaking of blessings, today's verse says, God is able to bless you abundantly. And he is. God has declared the silver is mine and the gold is mine. And it's true. But his blessings go way beyond mere financial provision. Honor also comes from him because he rules over all. And in his hand are power and might, the ability to lift someone up and make them great. Even the capacity to give strength is his. There's a phrase you may have heard that tells us to count our blessings. Well, it's not actually a direct quote from the Bible, even though being deliberate about remembering all the good things that God has done for you is an instruction that's often repeated in his word. Like in the Psalms, King David shares one of his prayers where he reminds himself to remember. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Then he goes on to recount several things the Lord has done. Well, remembering to be grateful requires a shift in perspective. One where we're deliberate about considering the many ways God has directed and protected, provided, and, and shown us his amazing love. News, social media, marketing messages, all these cry out for your attention. But most of the time, their focus is on bad news and problems that you can't directly impact. Or they're drawing attention to things that you don't have. But when it's time to move, <laughs> and therefore time to put all your possessions into boxes. Well then, the magnitude of God's blessings becomes pretty clear. I mean, counting your blessings is fairly easy when they're all in boxes stacked against the wall. <laughs> well, not all of them. Many of the blessings God gives us are loving relationships. Spouses, parents, children, close friends. These can be among our most treasured relationships. Bo Lanier, a, a poet from Chattanooga, Tennessee, hit the nail on the head when he wrote, when I count my blessings, I count you twice. God is able to bless you abundantly. And as he does, we should remember that we've been blessed to be a blessing. Those of us committed to following Jesus should remember how he himself said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. Giving's an expression of gratitude. Give, and it, it'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. Generosity is rewarded. And the measure you use to give your gifts is the one that will be used to measure the blessings he returns back to you. One gives freely, yet grows all the richer, while another withholds what they should give and only suffers want. My advice is give the way you want to receive, because God is faithful in all things. 
I don't want his blessings to come in small, sporadic outbursts. So I don't give that way. But don't be concerned if you don't have a lot to give, because it's, it's not how much you give, but that you give that's important. Yeah, one day when Jesus was sitting in the temple grounds, he, he looked up and he saw the rich people putting their gifts into the offering box. Then he saw a poor widow put in two small copper coins. And he told his disciples, this poor widow has put in more than all of them. The wealth he contributed out of their abundance, but she out of her poverty put in all she had to live on. You know, each one of us has to give as they've decided in our hearts. Each one should give, and we should give with joy, not reluctantly or under compulsion, because God loves it when we give cheerfully. It reflects his character in us. The point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So don't be afraid to give. Give generously and regularly. Give where God leads you to give. Sow like you want to reap. Remember that he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply what you have in your hands. If you're faithful, he'll increase the harvest of your righteousness. And you'll be enriched in every way so you can be generous on every occasion. And when that happens, your giving will produce thanksgiving to God. Yeah, God is able to bless you abundantly. You know, one of the best things you can give someone is the knowledge that Jesus loves them. Can I ask you to help me introduce people to the Jesus they never knew and help them get to know him and his word personally and better? Please like this video and that'll help more people see it. And then click follow or subscribe right over here in this corner so that you and I can get together every day. One more thing, share it with a friend, would you? Because as you do, you're part of the team touching hearts all over the world with the love of Jesus. Thanks for helping.